Sound speeds, and I have a question for you. If I were to use a different mic on this channel, one with an identical frequency response as the one I'm currently using, would I sound the same or would I sound different? I've already given you too long to think about it, actually. If you said I would sound the same, it's probably because you've gotten it somehow in your mind that frequency response is the main factor behind driving the way a microphone sounds. And I don't know where you could have gotten that idea. Maybe another YouTube channel, maybe some video you've seen otherwise on the internet, or maybe a TV show or movie, some sort of document on the internet. There's a lot of information out there. If you said I could sound different, then it's probably because it is a different microphone. Well, the true answer is it depends. It's an oversimplification to say that the frequency response is the only thing that matters with regards to how a microphone sounds. If it were, then the spec sheet would simply look like this. The fact of the matter is there are many things to consider when comparing two different microphones, and frequency response is simply the stat they throw in your face. The same as when you are looking for a new car, how they throw gas mileage in your face. Now, if I were to compare a 2018 Porsche 911 Carrera and a 2018 Chevy Colorado two-door pickup truck, truck. Gas, diesel, oh, well, it's the same gas mileage. It must be the same, right? Not exactly. You've heard me say it before, and I'll reiterate. Sound is simply vibration, and in this case, it is sound traveling through the air to your ear, or rather the microphone. Now, the microphone converts this acoustic energy into an electrical current, and based on how you look at this electrical current and in what program, you may recognize to be a waveform. On the surface, you may say that any microphone with a frequency response that is identical will produce the exact same looking waves, but that is not the case because every microphone manufacturer out there measures their microphones a different way. That's right, there is no standard way for testing a microphone. One microphone manufacturer could choose to test their mics at one foot away from the noise source in an anechoic chamber, while another microphone manufacturer could choose to test at one meter away from the noise source in an anechoic chamber. Now, if you're not familiar with an anechoic chamber and what that means, it's basically a soundproof room that is dead flat and free of all forms of sound reflection. If those microphone testing methods do not seem like a big deal to you, let me put it in perspective. Imagine that both Porsche and Chevrolet have two totally different methods for testing their gas mileage. Porsche brings vehicles inside, puts them on a treadmill, brings it up to 30 miles an hour, and then sees how far it will go on one gallon of gas, while Chevrolet chooses to go 60 miles an hour down the highway and test the same gallon of gas. You think the results would be any different? Let's keep with the car analogy for a while. The Porsche is a sports car running on gasoline, while the Chevy is a truck running on diesel. This could be compared to maybe a dynamic versus a condenser microphone, or a condenser versus a ribbon microphone. Two different types of microphones powered completely different ways, if they're powered at all, you know, in the case of a dynamic, and they could have the same exact frequency response, but sound different because of their microphone classification. The frequency response chart and the specs in general don't tell you a few things about the way a microphone sounds. You have to hear it. For example, how detailed is the sound? How's the fidelity? How transparent is the sound? How clear is it? If you're talking about omnidirectional microphones, you may hear it more than a cardioid or supercardioid, but how does it deal with reflections, the dissipation of the sound? All these things you can't tell simply by looking at the specs. Here's a few more things to consider. The microphone manufacturing process itself, a company that specializes in three to $15,000 microphones is going to have a very different quality standard than a company that specializes in one to $500 microphones. They're at different price points. They're in different markets and leagues. The company that specializes in the three to 5,000 or the three to $15,000 microphones, that company is going to have very strict quality standards. When they engineer a microphone, they want the components of the, the microphone that they originally tested and produced their prototype, if you will, to have exact specified manufactured parts. And when they produce parts for their new microphones that are going to follow that design, they want them to maybe deviate less than one hundredth of one percent. While a company that's bigger that might specialize in maybe the one to five hundred dollar microphones, that company might say, well, as long as it's within two or three percent, deviation, we're okay with that. The quality of components being put into the microphone being assembled is one thing. The consistency with which those components are put together in the manufacturing process when the microphone is being assembled is yet another. High quality components that meet a very strict rigid guideline regarding quality control, if they are put in sloppily or do not exactly match the way that the prototype was produced, it will yield different sound results than the prototype. 
really, really, really cheap microphones, or I should say discount microphones, those are more about putting together components that actually work rather than producing a carefully engineered microphone. Do you think those were tested in an anechoic chamber by engineers that really cared about their quality? If you buy five of these really cheap microphones and try to compare them, you're probably not going to find a matching pair amongst them. However, if you buy a matching pair of microphones, those were designed to specifically match each other by the manufacturer. And that's the reason why you can't just buy two totally separate single microphones and expect them to be a matching pair in the sense of a matching pair. They have to actually be manufactured as such. Here's something else. If the microphone tested was one foot away from the noise source and you stand four inches off the mic versus maybe two feet off the mic, you are going to sound totally different because the closer you get to that microphone, the more you're going to kind of engage that proximity effect that, you know, the lower frequencies coming out in the voice, tendency of sounding deeper and lower pitched when you get right up on a microphone versus standing farther away when the lows almost go away and dissipate in the air. The reason for this is that it takes more power for lower frequencies to travel at a greater distance than it does for higher frequencies. Higher frequencies are more directional. They travel in straight line in a frequency that is 50 hertz and below is completely omnidirectional if i were to take sand and throw it 360 degrees around my body using the same energy as i could throw it in a straight line Think about that for a second. Sound is the exact same way. The low frequencies are the omnidirectional ones. They go in every direction. And at the one that's in a straight line, that's more of a high. Think about a nightclub. If you're on the dance floor, you can hear the bass and you can hear the mids and highs. But if you go off the dance floor, you hear the doo, doo, doo. you don't hear the highs as much. The same thing here, let me demonstrate it. I'm gonna go off axis a little bit. I'm only 30 degrees off axis. You are losing some of the highs because I'm directing my voice this way and it's going in a straight line that way. You're still hearing the lows. 90 degrees off axis, you're hearing still the same lows, but the highs are starting to dissipate more because my microphone right here is not picking me up as much. I'm not gonna turn all the way around behind me. You get the idea. The lows are going in every single direction and it takes more energy and power for me to thrust those lows out into the air than the highs. And the microphone can detect that. So if you're close on a microphone, the microphone is going to pick up the lows better because it's not gonna disperse quite as much if my microphone is right there in front of my mouth. All of those low frequencies are going to be picked up square on that microphone capsule and right there on the diaphragm. If I'm farther away, those lows are going to dissipate a lot more and they're not going to be making it to the microphone. So there's yet another thing that is a big factor. By now, I'm sure you've noticed, and it might have even been driving you crazy that I'm not perfectly centered on your screen. Well, that's because I've been using the invisible boom technique. Remember the invisible boom? If you haven't watched that video, check it out because it is a very critical technique, especially if you're a boom operator. You need to know it. But it's a fun video to watch even if you're not a boom operator. But I've been using the invisible boom technique. Let me center myself up here for a second. Now, if I go like this, you notice that there is something hidden there. You're not going to see that just yet because there are two microphones with an identical frequency response. And I want to see if you can tell the difference between the two. Picture one and picture two. Those two pictures I'm going to show you in a couple of minutes and you're going to really see what I have in front of me. Two identical microphones, well, by frequency response at least, but not by any other spec. Those two microphones, I'm not going to tell you what they are, but I'm going to switch back and forth between the two of them so that you can hear them both on my voice right now. And I will even go quiet so you can hear the noise floor behind them. Sorry it's raining, but I'm not doing any process on this video, so take that in, into consideration here. At least I should say I'm not doing processing on these two microphones that I'm testing now. I was doing it on the microphone that you heard for the regular presentation that I did for this channel and in this video. Now, I continue to talk here and I'm blabbing at this point, as I'm sure you've noticed, but I want to really drive home the point that you are hearing these two microphones back and forth. They do sound different, even though the frequency response is identical. And I do mean they are identical. They are completely flat, completely flat. Okay, now I'll go ahead and tell you what they are. One of them is the Sonarworks X-Ref 20 calibration microphone that is dead flat because it is used as part of the Sonarworks calibration system, which is basically used to flatten out your studio monitor speakers. The other one is a DPA 4018C. DPA microphones are designed to be acoustically flat, transparent, clear, and exactly precise. 
allowing you to basically hear the maximum fidelity of the sound the way it was actually there on the stage or the set or wherever you happen to be listening to it. I'm still switching back and forth between the two microphones so you get an idea of how each microphone sounds while I talk about it. Let me show you the two pictures real quick. This picture shows that the diaphragm of the Sonarworks XRF20 microphone is identical in distance away from my mouth as the DPA 4018C. They do sound totally different because they are two totally different patterns for one. The XREF Sonarworks microphone is an omnidirectional microphone, and the DPA is a super cardioid. And if I want to step away a little bit, you will really hear this drive out. Right now, I'm about two feet off the mic, and you will notice that they sound very different. The DPA is going to pull out my voice a lot better because it is a super cardioid microphone. The omnidirectional is going to be picking up more of the sounds around me. Now, if I go quiet, Even boosted, you can hear the difference in the noise floor between the two microphones. An omnidirectional pattern microphone is picking up all the sounds around it in a very dispersed manner and all basically summed together for the microphone output signal. The same thing actually happens with a super cardioid, but it is more focused in one particular direction. In this case, it's my voice. My voice is only right now about one foot off the mic, and you are going to hear it in a lot better clarity than you will hear the omnidirectional because it is focused straight here on my voice as opposed to trying to hear me and the rest of the room. A microphone is basically a sum of all the frequencies from all different directions around the microphone being pulled together at the same time. If it is focused more in one particular direction, it is going to pull that sound out better and it is going to be noticeable. One final note here, the frequency response chart is going to be smoothed differently according to the manufacturer and how they choose to do it. For example, the Sonarworks microphone, as you look at the frequency response chart, it is dead flat. It does not deviate at all. It is completely flat all the way from the lowest frequency to the highest frequency that you can see on this chart. The DPA microphone, DPAs basically have a very high quality standard and they show you any little tiny deviation because they're very proud of their engineering and how close they get their microphone to sound like their prototypes that were engineered. They are not smooth very much and you see it on this chart with all the tiny little bitty bumps and basically the things that make up their frequency response chart. Those little tiny peaks and stuff, they're not smooth like you see on a lot of other frequency response charts. And that's not because their quality standards are lower. It's because they show you every little bitty thing because they are so proud of their quality standards. They don't need to do a lot of smoothing to show it to you. Some microphone manufacturers might even conjure up a frequency response chart if they don't have the money to properly test their microphones or if their microphones deviate too much because of the quality control and the manufacturing process that I mentioned before. If you don't really take care in either one of those things, why bother spending the money on testing your microphones? Hopefully I've made my point here. The frequency response is not everything. There's a lot of factors to consider and they all are very important. So keep this in mind as you are picking out microphones, do a little bit of research and definitely try to listen to them before you buy. That is sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.